We've got some hey, I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. And you're listening to the Content is Profit podcast. And we spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the content marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. If you want to learn how to turn that content into profit, just go to contentisprofit.com. There's step number one in there for you. Oh, yeah. Fonzie, oh, yeah. what happened today? We've done this I, 168 times and we'll still cannot master this intro. Hey, I threw a curveball right there. It's usually know. we learn from the top <laughs> marketers in the world, but today I said from the content top marketers. content marketers in the world, which it still applies. You're confusing me. You know, confusing we, me. we're getting up there in the 1% Anyways. of the top marketers in the world. Now, guys, today we have an incredible guest and an incredible topic. We're going to be talking about how to triple your business in less than a year. What? Is that even real? We're going to check that, that out. Oh, we're we're going to discover we're gonna, that. We're going to deep dive that is on great. that. And by the way, Fonzi, question for you. Yes. Do we have a sponsor today? Thank you for asking. Oh, you're welcome. Indeed, you're we welcome. do. Today's sponsor is your own, The Biz Bros. Yes, we sponsor our own show. Yeah, with thank content you, guys. Thank momentum. You. So, if you are asking yourself, what is content momentum? If you produce a long form piece of content just like this one that you're mm. listening to or watching and you want to turn it into value packed bite sized assets, you need a plug and play team that yeah. comes into your business and delivers this for you, helps you maximize all this effort that you're putting into your content. Yes. Then we want to help you out. Slide in the DMs at Beast Bros Co. on Facebook and Instagram. Ooh, and I think bad. I've had way too much caffeine today. I know. That that <laughs> was a bad choice of me bringing you this energy drink. Yes, absolutely. Anyways, guys, I want to say thank you because of you, we are one of the top 5% podcasts in the entire world. Woo, baby, let's, let's go. go. Thank you. I don't know if I've shared that data with you, Fonzie. Yeah, I think no, this is the exclusive exciting. today. Exclusive. So, guys, go ahead and follow the show, please, because every Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays, there's incredible entrepreneurs coming, sharing their journey and telling you exactly what to do to take your business to the next level. Who, baby. And follow us on Biz Bros Co. in every single social media channel so you can see all these golden boulders that you can apply as well. That is right. And if mm. today's guest help you move one step closer to your goal, please don't forget to share it because you might get to do the same for somebody else. And this one right here is a little bit of a selfish ask, but please please leave a review whether it is positive negative we receive every review but the idea for us right we need the review so we can place higher and we can help more people accomplish their goals thank you it's if it is friday and you know what that means another epic guest on the content is profit show and today we have another local legend which means that eventually we'll have to do an in-person round two that is right today's guest is best known as the probate king he's a lawyer that has leveraged the power of relationships to check this out triple his business in one year if that doesn't blow your mind i don't know what will but if you are ready to learn how he did this just keep listening today's guest is such a strong believer in content that he's currently building his own studio by the way he just built he just finished he i finished think it, he yeah. finished his own studio inside of his house i freaking love it that is right please welcome jackson bills royalty host of the al nicoletti show the probate king himself Oh, Nicoletti! <laughs> What's going on, guys? I love with this whole opener. What an introduction. <laughs> Luis Fonzi. I mean, all the music, all the bells and whistles. I love it. Content is profit is no doubt. Thank you both for having me on the show. I can't wait to dive in and get through all the topics with both of you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Just so you know, I feel like my, my, my heart <laughs> my heart rate just went from like 120 to like 180 during this intro. I was getting excited as we go. I'm like, are we really going to have all Nicolette in here? I'm so thankful you didn't tune out through that, that long intro. Really appreciate yeah. it. I'm very excited to have you here today. Oh, yeah, of course. All the coffee. I see, Fonzie, you had all the coffee beforehand. You needed it, right? Just, yeah. just, just so you know, I was at a coffee shop before <laughs> coming here. And then I come here and there's a uh, energy drink for me. So, yes, I'm going to have to run it off after this, so, after this episode. You know, uh, Al, we, you know, we met a few, what was it, like a few weeks ago, you know, at your place when you were building your studio. Incredible investment, right? Uh, now we talk about these modern media teams, right? And, and being out there and sharing the message. And I remember coming back to, to our studio. I was 
was like, Fonsi, we're going to have this guy in the show. Like, we need to level up our energy level. So that's why. Like, <laughs> he was like, oh, my God, do I have enough? Do I have enough caffeine? And we have people like here in the, on the audience. Tim is like, he, he runs a coffee business. Like, there's never enough caffeine. <laughs> like, we have to have it. But, Al, again, like, thank you so much. Why don't you share a little bit with, uh, you know, with us and, and everybody that's listening and watching right now. Like, who who's Al? Like, why, you know, why you do what you do? And then that transition to publishing, I think is so fascinating. Yeah, my first answer would be, uh, I feel like now I'm the influencer, right? I'm yeah. the podcaster <laughs> influencer. And uh, before I was uh, more lawyer and marketer, uh, but I'll start my whole journey, right? So um, Al, I used to be a musician. I played the violin for many years. I was a violinist for 15 years. That's my violin up there. I, I had to put it part of the studio, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Like, Which you know, he you, said he might play. <laughs> <laughs> We're not getting into that right now. <laughs> But you have to put your showcase and your stuff that you've done throughout your years yep. on the studio. So I had to have it on the shelf right there. But I played the violin for 15 years. Um, I knew that music wasn't really going to do it and make me the money in, in the business. Uh, so uh, naturally, I, all of a sudden, I said, I, I got a personality. I know how to meet with people. Uh, why don't I just be a lawyer, right? Bright idea. Just go to law school. So I uh, went to law school. I thought I could put the music and the lawyer part together, and I was going to be an entertainment lawyer. And then I found out there's no money really in that because then you're <laughs> part of a really super small niche in California or maybe Nashville and Atlanta. And uh, good luck getting into that niche. You got to really know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. So um, uh, eventually I got out of law school. I had no idea what I really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I remember studying for the bar exam and I thought, oh, real estate looked really interesting, but I really didn't know if it was going to be real estate that I was going yeah. to end up practicing, right? That was a real surprise to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the first things that you do coming out of law school is you Uh, find whatever job you can get. And so I had an old family friend, mentor of mine. We, um, It's actually crazy. His son and I played in the quartet together. We used to do weddings and different venues and uh, play play at different events as like teenagers in high school, you know, make money, made like 500 bucks a gig, you know? So yeah. I've always been like a hustler, right? I've always been like, <laughs> yeah. wanted to keep going and find content and do things. Um, so I hooked up with them and, and they said, hey, you know, want to be a part of this firm, join. Mm -hmm. And so I worked, I was doing a bunch of foreclosure defense. I knew naturally I was a marketer. So mm. uh, when I was doing all that stuff, I jumped into networking groups uh, in Miami. And, you know, of course, at that time, I've never been in that environment where they say, hey, pass around the mic, pass around the mic. And, you know, it's like every time you get the mic, you're like, oh, what do I say? I don't know what kind of content's going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> so in the beginning, you know, I, I, I had to find my way, right? Like I had to find my voice. I had to find my personality when it came to all the speaking and, and content producing. So I think it was after like the first year I'm at all the events and I kept saying to myself, you got to be different. You got to change up your game. You got to always uh, be flexible in your game. So Uh, I, when I was getting up to all the tables, I said, you know what, I'm going to say different stuff. I got up there and I started realizing I had a different speaking style that people paid attention to that was easy listening that I could relate to people with and people loved it and gravitated towards it. And I knew I had a speaking style then. And so eventually I got a job up in Jacksonville because um, I was starting to push up uh, an idea. Right. So a yeah. lot of a lot of this on our show, we're going to talk about content, really, because it surrounds the content that I'm producing and yeah. the niche. You know, it's not so much about all the probate, but it's the marketing side to things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I had an idea in Miami, but in Miami, every uh, uh, five seconds, there's a shiny new object. So nobody really pays attention <laughs> yep. to the idea. Yeah. Right. So um, a buddy of mine, he was like, you know, if you did this up in Jacksonville, you'd blow it up. And at the time I said, I mean, I guess I can, I'll see what happens. So I took a chance, yeah. left Miami, came up to Jacksonville and I, I knew I wanted to bring this probate idea, you know, because it's all about creating systems, mm -hmm. uh, automating it and monetizing it, right? That's what content is profit, right? Yeah. Yep. Systemize, automate and, and monetize. So I brought the system in Jacksonville. I tried it out. I was like, you know, it does this work? Does this work? You know, does email marketing work? Does this work? And in the beginning, it was a little tricky. Um, and then at a certain point, I realized I had to start speaking. Mm. And I think it was when I started the speaking and putting out that content and bringing a message is when it started to change the game, right? So who is Al? Al now is the influencer, 
because I'm out there constantly speaking at events. I'm out there always pushing out content, mm-hmm. being consistent with the content, and people take notice. They're like, whoa, look what you're doing. You're, you're out there. And now because of the show and because of the graphics and the videos that I put out there, people are taking notice of that and going, yeah. wow, like, you, you know, we could tell about your brand. So, yeah, from attorney to marketer to influencer, you got me on the show. That's uh, awesome, Mal. Thank you for sharing, man. I, I'm, I'm. By the way, you're a great storyteller, and I yeah. love that how you broke down your 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 history and your like your your entire timeline. Um, so so much to unpack in this <laughs> yes. like first what ten minutes, and uh, you know I, I love how you started from a creative place as a musician, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, I remember growing up, our we had. Our dad, who was soccer, like, he was like, you guys are going to be some professional soccer players. And that's part of our story. And then our mom was like fighting for us to be in music class, right? And, you know, we tried on the creative side. And now that we have evolved and we, you know, I'm 31 now, you know, and, and we're like, we're way past that. They, they live in a different country. We're like, wow, what an incredible thing would have been like us focusing a little bit more on the creative side, right? Because there's benefit to both, right? So I, I love that that's your starting point spot and then you 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 pivot it right you're not you're not afraid to pivot you're like okay let me go to law school this is the opportunity that i see let me execute and then you mentioned something you said something that is like hey i've always knew i was a marketer and uh it's like i, I always knew right and, and a lot of people that are starting to create content are in business right for example for us i think the transition to business to content creation we were it, it was i, I want to i don't want to say simple but it was as soon as we started executing on it it became easier and easier. Whether we see, and we see a lot of people that come and interact with us that are having a very big wall in front of them before starting to to be a marketer and share their message and share the story. So why do you think that element of like, I always had it. Like wh- when do you realize you were like, hey, it's, it's kind of simple for me to actually get in front of people or in, in a room, right? In a networking environment or in front of a camera and, and share my message. Did, did something happen in when you were growing up or like in school that you were like, huh, this, you know, this helped me become this person that I am marketer or like, do you always had it? Like, or how was it? Like, how was that evolution for you? So if you ask my mom that question, she would say <laughs> I've had it since I was like seven, eight years old. Right. So I think it really all started when we used to have these little competitions in school for like memorizing, like um, like serious recitation, humorous recitation. Right. Everybody would get on stage. You'd like, you know, you do your whole show and yeah. then they give out ribbons and everything. Well, um, I, my mom remembers the whole story. I have I have pictures of it still. <laughs> I should probably put it up on the shelf. Yes. But I, I did a serious recitation. I memorized it memorize it memorize it and i think that's also what helped get me into my improvisation as a violin player too Mm -hmm. but that's a whole other thing um and remember getting up on stage and there were three people uh two of them one of them was me but two of them were supposed to be like really good and i got up there i just did my thing i i I get up there, I'm showtime, and uh, the other two went up there as well, and I thought after, uh, there was no way I was going to do this, mm-hmm. and I actually ended up getting the first place, the ribbon prize, right? So I, I took that, and then I think it was that idea of the violin playing as well, where I could get up in front of a stage of 100 people in an auditorium and have the spotlight on me, and I didn't have to speak, but I can perform and play, yeah. and I just had, I just felt cool as a cucumber right like i I didn't i didn't uh, freeze up and i just kept doing what i'm doing and i also learned from those uh recitals that i used to have i had a violin teacher that was like really strict every year you know recital 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 like get up there and do it almost forcing me to get up there and do it so Mm -hmm. luis i'd have to say like it's a combination of my upbringing when i was doing a lot of the recitations and the performing and then Mm -hmm. also performing as a violinist because i was really good back in high school i mean i was one of the first top chairs um, I, I wasn't ever really concert master, but I was one of the top chairs. Good, always good at doing the solo work. Yeah. Uh, but I could always get up in front of people, and I would just play it out. Even if it was there was a mistake, you just move on, and it's just a mindset, right? Uh, so then that's why I'm able to do what I am today, where I just speak. Oh, thank you. I, I just had this massive epiphany moment when you were sharing this story, right? Because 
we play soccer like all our life, right? And we will play in front of an audience, right? There was like either from our parents to like the neighbors and then later in life, like the whole college, right? And and maybe like as I'm listening to your story, I'm, I'm catching the similarities throughout for people that perform in somewhat of a stage. It could be like an athletic stage. It could be like a, a creative stage. They're performing somewhere. And then when they translate those abilities into their business, it's easier for them to be in front of the camera and sharing their message because subconsciously you've already performed in front of different audiences. It's just a different vehicle, right? So we, we have a lot of people that come through or 45 live challenge, right? And uh, the first public version that we did uh, a few months ago, we have people that have, have performed in, in theater, right? And they were like, let's do this, right? In front of the camera and they use customs and, and a couple of people come to mind, but there's other people that have never been in that environment and there was a lot of friction between them and their message and getting it out, right? So maybe for those, you know, for you listener, right? Like if you are in this journey of starting to publish, maybe a good place to start is let's go and learn a class or learn something that we can perform before we even take those abilities and put them into your business. And I'm like, oh, epiphany moment, right? So maybe fancy a new, new homework for the 45 Live is the first week we'll all have to do improv, class, improv classes. That, that, that's what I was going to talk about. I remember uh, way before we started <laughs> publishing, actually, we saw a video of Billie Jean. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Billie Jean is marketing. And he was talking about how he used to do improv classes to get comfortable with himself, right? Just comfortable with the uncomfortable, honestly, right? And what you're talking about, this, you know, these recitals, uh, you know, these shows that you had to do, it reminds me of something that we talked with our last guest, Andy Storch, and he mentioned, I have it here, confidence comes from building experience, right? And then I started thinking, how do you build experience? And it's just about taking action into the uncomfortable zone, right? Like getting out of your comfort zone on a consistent basis, right? Like I, I am a true believer that fear never goes away, but you train your body to act even if you have that fear, right? So the fear of being in camera, like it's going to be there to some extent, but now you've trained yourself so many times to be in front of the mm -hmm. camera that that's eventually going to go, well, I mean, not go away, but eventually you're going to be able to take action uh, easier, right? In a more, more, more consistent way. So that's what I see with your story. And I absolutely love it, but I'm curious, what is maybe... A, a tip that you can give to those people that are struggling that didn't have that past of, you know, getting in front of audiences, performing in either sports or, you know, creative uh, arts like like violin. Right. What can they do today to move past that? Two things. Go in front of a camera more. I think the camera can be more intimidating than being in front of people. So mm -hmm. um, and then the second thing we'll talk about that. But the second thing is. Uh, find something that you can market and and make a message on and go speak about that. doesn't have mm. to be everything, right? So uh, when I first started out, I was doing all the speaking stuff here in Jacksonville. I was talking on this, on this, on this, on so many different things. And I said, you know what? I, I want to focus on probate and I want to focus on some of the niche things. So you get your message and you, you find something that excites you and makes you have that energy And that you can monetize, right? So yeah. like, you know, there, there's a, and make content off of it, but the content leads to the monetization. Um, yeah. But I would say we could talk about both and elaborate on both. But I would say the first time I started getting in front of the camera is when I think my speaking style and my personality really came through with being all live and, and performing. I actually think that now it's easier being in front of an audience mm. if you can speak in a camera and many people wouldn't believe that when i say that right like i'm looking in front of the camera right now and i'm not talking to any person and you mm. have to have an on camera the persona because it's like it's really hard i'm not talking to you yeah. louise that's here in person but if you know how to do that i yeah. think then standing up in front of people when everybody goes back in person is going to be so much easier because You would have developed the skill and you watch yourself. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you record and then you watch yourself. So I've gotten in a habit of it's hard to do that. <laughs> right? It's hard to watch yourself because you're just like, oh, I don't know, like, you know, <laughs> who is this guy? But then you look back and you're like, wow, I mean, that I, I liked when I did that. Yeah. I didn't like when I did that. So that yeah. helps a lot. But finding 
something that you can be passionate about that brings the energy, right? Like, just like you guys, you both love talking about content and how it has helped people build their business, right? So you're not talking about a uh, uh, land use or zoning. You're talking about something that excites you, that gets yes. you going. Yes. That's what you should do as, as if you're out there. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I, I love the, the example that, that you just gave about reflecting after creating the content, right? I think a lot of people miss that part. I, and and we've shared a little bit about this, but there's such a huge advantage of doing that, right? And being in front of the camera, the ability to be able to go back and see where you can improve in your message, right? It's like, huh, that didn't resonate with the, with, I mean, if it didn't even resonate with me, how's going to resonate with the audience, right? And then you can start crafting your message better and better. And That leads a little bit to something I wanted to touch base with. When you were talking about being in Miami, that you were, you know, the people were passing the mic around and you're like, oh, what am I going to do with this? And eventually you started thinking, what can I do different? Mm -hmm. Right. And we love that word different. Right. Because we don't believe marketing is, is just about doing things better. You should always strive to do things better than you didn't before. But it's about people perceiving you in a different way. Right. Because. If they just perceive you that you're a better option, first, they're going to have to tell themselves, oh, I was doing it wrong. They have to admit that they were wrong. So then they can go ahead and do it better. And I'm doing air quotes here. But if you present them a different option, they're going to be like, huh, okay, I don't have to take the blame for maybe, you know, doing things not in the, the, the best of ways. And I can yeah. just go ahead, kind of like guilt free and try this different option. <laughs> so... My thought process with you is like, how do you get to this kind of like critical thinking aspect? Um, is it the reflection that you started building? Because I'm guessing you did it with violin as you played the violin. You're like, huh, I'm doing this. You know, I can improve in here. I can improve in there. How do you get to that critical thinking and that moment that you said, I need to do things differently? Well, it's amazing because I don't think I ever used to have critical thinking. And I guess that it was either through law school or <laughs> through what I'm doing now, the critical thinking comes out. It's crazy. It's 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 wild to me. Yeah. Um, it's a great question, Fonzie. So I think I think it was a matter of a mindset that like when you see what other people are doing, um, if you you could do two things, you have two options in human behavior. You can do exactly what they do and then you can play it safe and get by. Or you can test something out and see if it's going to get a reaction, good or negative. And at least you'll get feedback from somebody that says, I don't know what you just set up there. It made absolutely no sense, but try this differently. And at least you could take constructive criticism, but they'll notice. They'll come up to you and say it. Yeah. So what happened is a great example was when I was at the groups. What do they do during lunchtime, right? They have they have the lunch line. Everybody's in uh, at the tables everybody's speaking and so the next thing you know they're passing around the mics and the first guy's like hey i'm john i'm uh you know i'm <laughs> from the roofer company and uh if you need any roofers my number is 305 111 and it's like you know not nothing crazy it's just john getting up there and doing what he's doing and then mike gets up there and does the same thing hey everybody I do life insurance uh, you need life insurance and it's just the same old boring stuff so yeah what you have to think of is what's going to get somebody's attention right so speaking style is something I never had to read in a book. I've just watched it and see, and tweaked it, right? I had a really good mentor. And so what, what I did was I would always ask a question. First mm -hmm. of all, I'd get up there and I'd give about five seconds in front of the microphone. So everybody's thinking, is this guy going to talk or is he going to say anything? <laughs> yes. and so they're paying attention, right? That's the first thing you're thinking. Is this guy going to say something? And then, then you ask a question. Because when you ask a question, it prompts somebody in their mind to give an answer whether they're thinking it in their head or they're saying it out loud or they're raising their hands so i would say how many of you let just an example how many of you ever came across a property where somebody was deceased and now you don't know what to do mm. how many of you have always wanted to retitle your property to make sure your kids get the property how many of you and, and i would keep asking a, a line of questioning that would help people answer it and i wouldn't even say my name at first did you notice mm. i haven't even said my yeah. name Because everybody would go, hey, I'm John. I do the roofing company. No, <laughs> don't even say your name because they're going to be out. So always prompt it with questions and then give the answer. So I, I'm the one that can solve that problem. I can do it in three days. I can do. I can wait for payment at the end. I'm Al Nicoletti. Make sure you take my number nine or four. And then everybody's just jotting it down, right? So <laughs> a bunch of questions that prompt people to 
to take action or to raise their hands and it helps participate. That's how I keep people glued on the screen. Just like you, Fonzie. Mm. I know you're paying attention. You're I ready am. to all the notes, I you am like, I am writing down. Yeah, this, this is an incredible <laughs> framework for those listening out there. Ooh. And, you know, this is this definitely shows your marketer side out, right? Uh, like, go, this, gong moment. Gong yeah, moment. This, this is incredible. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm going to kind of like unpack a little bit what you just did here in in, in this last two minutes. Yeah. So, you, so for you listening, please pay attention. Like, yeah. I mean, grab a piece you, of paper you can, and you, a pen. Can, you can go back to minute 22 and then pay attention right now. That absolutely. So, <laughs> what you did right now was building a lot of pressure, right? You step number one when you get the mic, five seconds of silence, right? People in there already are gonna start questioning some sort, right? They're gonna have thoughts because <laughs> the usual action is for people to immediately start speaking. Hi, my name is Fonsi, blah, 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 right? But you're like, I'm gonna be different. And you just stay there five seconds, right? Those five seconds, most people will start sweating and getting nervous. And it's like, oh my gosh, what am I doing, right? But no, now you're perceived, perceived different by the audience. You start building pressure. Then the next thing is you hit them up with a question, not just any question. You're not asking them like, who in here has a dog? No, it's a <laughs> question that is related to what you do, but it's about them. Right, it's related to what you do, but it's about them in the sense like, have you experienced this pain? Right? Is this discomfort constantly bothering you? But these are pains that you have the solution to. And then after they have said yes to some of those questions that you ask, because in their mind, minds always want to answer all these questions that, that you ask them. That's why having hooks and questions at headlines is so important because people immediately are going to answer them and they, they want to confirm whether it is true or not. And that's when you come in and you tell them, well, I am the guy that can solve that problem. You need that ladder that takes you from problem to solution. Ooh, that is me. Perfect. And this is how you get in contact with me. Call to action right there. Call to action. We need to always include a call to action. And that's where a lot of people fail. Actually, they miss the part of you need to let the people know how to get in contact with you. How do mm -hmm. they reach you and the solution? So give them a call to action. In this case, Al, you are fantastic at it. I am Al Nicoletti, and I can solve that problem for you. Here's my phone number. Just get in contact with me. That was just a masterclass, Al. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. that so much. <laughs> quick, quick question for you: Like, do you have a name for this framework? Because we, we're just gonna call the Al framework. I'm like, what? Uh, you know, it's 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 pretty good. We're gonna start like, you know. The Nicoletti method. The Nicoletti method. Yeah, Boom. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, by the way, like if you see my iPad right now, it's all highlighted in yellow. We're like, this was <laughs> so good. So thank you. I cannot wait to try this live. Like Absolutely. I cannot wait to do the five second of silence. And it's yes. going to be, oh, so exciting. So thank you. People uh, are going to be like, are these guys lagging or what? What's happening? <laughs> it's empowering. It's empowering, right? So yeah. when you get up there, you already know what you're going to do. Mm. Yeah. And so they don't. And you're already confident in that the strategy is yeah. going to work. So you're already on top of them for what you're going to do. So yeah. it's it's something different. It's but, something different. I, I'm going to just go to a, a networking meetup just to try just this to try technique the, in the person, Nicoletti I'm telling method. you. Yeah. And at the end, I'm going to tell everybody, like, guys, I just use the Nicoletti <laughs> method. If you want to learn more about this, go check out Al Nicoletti, right? Uh, um, yeah. I, I want to transition here a little bit. I, I love all this part that we've been talking about, <laughs> the mindset, stepping into the, the uncomfort, uh, uncomfortable zone, right? And then building pressure a little bit of these marketing uh, principles that we've talked about. But I'm extremely curious. I, I highlighted here the systems automate and monetize part of things, right? And I want to break that part because, I mean, I don't know exactly for how long you have been publishing at this point, but you're doing it in the right way. You have grown an audience. You have tripled your business in one year. So let's unpack this for the person that is listening right now. Uh, where do we even start off? I would say starting at probably tripling the business, right? <laughs> so when I first got here, I brought this idea, right? I brought this probate idea, this this sell about, hey, you know, do you realize how many properties are sitting out there? You know, this, there's a way that we can do this quickly. Um, everybody likes quick, right? Everybody likes mm -hmm. fast, right? And then everybody likes the fact that you don't have to pay things up front. So I brought an idea, of doing it right so it didn't implement right away and that was going to be that's the system now that i've automated 
but I brought the idea. And from that idea, I was able to be out there speaking and doing and, and, and working on it. And so in my first year being here, from all the networking, from speaking to going to events. That's a whole other thing too we could talk about. I don't go to everything any, not every single event every time anymore. In the beginning, it was like that. But um, I was going out to different events. I was doing promotions. I was doing the sponsorships. In the first year, I think I did $30,000 in 2019. Mm. And then in 2020, I think, I can't even remember if it was like almost uh, 200000 Wow. So yeah, I grow like or no, it was it was <laughs> net. It was close to net. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah, and and that was because yeah. I I promoted it and I didn't stop. Right, yeah. I don't have any obligations. So what am I doing? I'm burn, burning the midnight oil and doing everything what I'm doing. Yeah. But from thirty thousand, about forty thousand, to then in twenty twenty, when you would think everything is just going you know down, everything's closed. My business didn't stop. It was depression proof, recession proof, and pandemic proof. Mm. So I, I mean, I kept going. And so in 2020, I did about two hundred thousand dollars in that time frame, um, or close to that, right, right wow. in that area. But just did it. I, I completely, I, I monetized doing what I was doing. And now I'm close to this year on pace for probably two fifty, three hundred. So, so what I've done with the idea is I've constantly marketed it out there. Luis and Fonzi, if you know what I do, you know I do probate, right? Mm -hmm. You don't hear me as the lawyer that does everything. Yeah. If yeah. I was the lawyer that did everything, I don't know if I'd have time for the very thing that is making me money and monetize. Right yeah. And that's where I wanted to go, right? Like you, we mentioned earlier, like, uh, or, or one of the things that highlighted, you know, was picking that niche, mm. right? And, and it's so important. Well, first of all, congratulations. And I want to walk people through what you just explained, just like very quickly, uh, you know, how to triple your business. Here's the, here's the framework, right? Take your notepads, people. Choose the idea. Start sharing your idea. Promote the heck out of that idea. Do not stop, right? That's the thing. And obviously, fulfill, right? On on the service side of things. We got to fulfill to keep the customers happy, right? So, uh, incredible, by the way. So, th thank you for sharing that, especially in 2020. And uh, But again, go, now going back to it, I think you touched on a very important topic is the niche aspect, right? And, and I, I go back to our journey, right? Like, we started as a sticker company and then we transition uh, xyz to uh exactly you're like you, you had no idea right we, all, we no used idea. to we don't know how to do stickers uh, <laughs> but then we did screen printing right and then when we started on the social media aspect of it social media has so much right mm -hmm. and at one point we were doing seven eight different types of services that we could not scale right because we're spread thin we could not hire somebody because the processes weren't built Another keyword that you mentioned earlier, right? And then when we decided to niche down on the one thing, which is content, which by the way, content is also very big, right? As we started diving in, we're like, whoa, there's so much, right? But then even we started niching down on that, you know, uh, on the type of content that we handle, yep. which is long form content to micro assets, M2M, we, just, we, we developed our own system, our own process, and then how, that's how we started going deep. And now we're we're from that one specific vertical, we're having this suite of products and, and, and different services that we can offer within that same vertical. So how was the process for you? I mean, was there, was it a calculated decision where you're like, huh, probate has the highest margins, probate is this, like, I'm sure like, do you have like a lot of uh, options when you, when you decided to niche down? Um, I don't know how it works in the, in the law, you know, world, but how was that process for you? And then what would you recommend to people trying to choose that niche? Right. For us it was a very hard decision because Fonzi was not sold on the content side of things. Right. So what was that process for you? It's funny because what you just said about niching down right there, like uh, what what's making the highest margins. Only recently did I realize <laughs> that it was making the highest margin. Ooh. So now it's it's even niching down more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in the beginning, it was about something you can sell, something you can pitch, something you have passionate about, 
something you can present. So if you've ever gone to any of my webinars or seminars, I always bring one of my patented PowerPoints because I always have something to show. It's mm -hmm. not just me up there. People like to see visuals. They like to see words. They like yeah. to see little graphics. So it was something that you can present and put in a package that's from start to finish, where they can find you, what's your message, what's coming, what's, what's about to happen, right? So people like to know that. So in my PowerPoint, I talk about how in the Florida market, we're about to hit this like huge baby boomer period, right? Yeah. And I always, I, I want to put something in there that's going to make them go, wait a second, what am I missing? What am I about yeah. to miss that everybody else is about to do? So putting that message in there about, wait, we need to be in on this now. And then what is it? Why is it? How long can it be? People like to know time and money. Yeah. So when I was looking for that niche early on, I, I don't have a lot of patience with some things, right? I have patience for some things, but I, but it, when it comes to business, I'm like, let's go, you know, let's, let's high performance, make it happen. Yeah. So when I was trying out the things in the beginning, like some of the, the litigation lawsuits, which I do them today, but I, I prefer the probate and the faster things now. Yeah. Um, I was, I was really wanting that, like, let's get it done. Let's knock it out. Let's make it happen. Let's get it done. Let's knock it out, make it happen. And so what I figured out it was probate was what was happening was I could get these th things done quick. The yeah. systems, right? Get it done quick. How? Get everything up front. Make make like almost an intake. Get everything up. Send it out. Get it filed. What's the system? Well, nobody wants to do it if they have to pay up front. So wait for payment at the end. We're insured payment at the close. Get paid at the end. Done. So that wasn't happening with a lot of the other niches or a little or little things like in the beginning I would do deeds or land trusts, but then that took time. That took like almost like gathering all the herds like to come and notarize and witness. It wasn't happening. So yeah. I, I wanted something where I could make a high margin, high profit, get it done, low costs, and get paid. Wow. Um, I, I love it. I, I also love so good. this might have flown. Fl flown. Flown. Fl uh, how do you flown? Word, yeah, it, it flown. flew under the radar. <laughs> it probably, maybe. Our English is not very good looking, but as you can tell. I, I love <laughs> the the mention there that you yeah. notice how people didn't want to pay up front, right? And that is that comes with listening to feedback, right? You mentioned it before. Mm -hmm. Some feedback might be good. Some feedback might be bad, but we need to be willing to listen and listen to your customers. And I think a lot of people miss that. And that is one of the huge advantage of content is being like, it teaches you and it, it, it kind of forces you to listen to this feedback because people are going to be commenting. They're going to be jumping on your platform. They're going to be interacting with you and you're going to have more conversations and more opportunities to better your process, right? What you're doing. And I love that you mentioned that because a lot of people might be thinking, Content is just for me to be in front of, you know, my, my customers' faces or my prospects' faces. No, it's another tool to get better, right? To improve your services, improve your processes, systems, all these things. So thank you for sharing that. And I, I, I wrote down here, kind of like the niching down points that you mentioned were sell, pitch, passion, share slash present and package with, uh, I translated into customer journey. What is that customer journey that I am systemizing, right? And, and, and automating. So thank you for that. I think that again, it's extremely valuable. We're going to have to do a full on guide on Ooh, this episode because I, I, I love your, your, your marketing brain, if I'm being honest, <laughs> and I'm extremely curious to know how, how, you know, within the space now that, that you practice law, right? That the probate space, is there anybody else doing this? Did you saw an opportunity once you started doing it, right? Once you started creating this content around and, and you saw you, kind of like you told yourself, huh, this is a golden opportunity. Maybe this is a space that hasn't actually started implementing this type of marketing that I'm doing and it's going to give me a competitive ad advantage over everybody else, right? Is it going to position me as a category king, which you are the probate king, right? Yeah. Um, I'm curious, what was that? Was that an epiphany at all for you? 
Um, I think it was something definitely in the back of my mind that, I mean, go for it, right? You find a hole and you take it. And um, uh, one of my best friends, he said, uh, I, I, I found the niche and I hit the ground running and I ran with it. And so I don't know if people are going to do it, right? I feel like I have a blueprint to what I do. Yeah. It's very unique and difficult. You have to have the personality. You have to have the drive. Yeah. Yeah. You have to have, be motivated and have a fire to do it. And so, and, and you have to be able to present, right? I am the face of my business. I am the one that's always out there and you have to be able to have results. So I could do marketing all day. I could be, hey guys, I'm the probate king. If I don't produce and actually make the results happen, then it's all for naught. And so yeah. it's a package deal. You get, you get the personality, you get the product, you get yeah. the you get the pitch, but then you also get the results and 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 the churn and burn. So the results are very key too, because people can hear me say it all day that I can wait until the end, and he he could do it in a week, he could do it in three days, uh, you could do it in two weeks. But if you don't actually do it, and people see it, and then when people post about it, I don't know if you both have seen that at all. All of a sudden, when I'm doing these lately, people just post about it, say, he just did it in like 11 days. Like we, an, another one knocked out, another one, <laughs> yeah. another one. And it's like, because when you keep doing a message and all of a sudden people realize, no, this is happening. It's different. And I respond to people, right? What are lawyers notorious for? They don't call people back. They don't email people <laughs> back. I don't have that personality. I'm always emailing back, calling back yeah. on the game, on the on the money with everything. Uh, so that, it's just it's just a package deal, Fonzie. Mm. It's hard to find. Um, yeah. And sure, people could do whatever they want. Everybody's going to have their own style. That's something yeah. I learned in Miami from the mentor. Right? I when I was getting up there speaking, I was almost trying to model what he was doing. And then I re and he told me he's like, "You're going to find your style." Well, I mean, I found my style. I mean, everybody's going to be different in what they do. Yeah. It's just. How do you do it? How do you systemize? It? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So good. Uh, what, what, before you no, go, I, I, I want to make. I, it's not a question. It's a reflection. All right, all right cool, cool. Uh, do I have your permission? You, you have permission. Okay. <laughs> yeah. When Fonzie gets in, inspired, that like, no one else, no one else can ha ask a question. All right, here we go. <laughs> so, um, in the workshop, we talked about you know building systems. For example, the content momentum workshop that we had a couple weeks ago, right? And uh, we go back to our own experience with trying to publish, right? And 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 I'm gonna relate it to publishing and and doing the the business itself, right? Sometimes we try to model what other people might be doing, right? So at first, when we first started exploring the possibility of of doing content, like four years ago, was like. Yeah. Gary Vee, Grant Cardone, Russell Branson, what are the frameworks and Payne June and there's roadmaps and the blueprints that you mentioned earlier, right? And then we started trying to do the same thing. But again, we started understanding that their capacity, their resources are very different than ours when we start to produce it, right? So that was one. And this is a concept that we explain a lot in, in, our, in our workshops called the publishing pyramid. So once we understood that, we're like, what is the system? That, it, that we are comfortable executing on, right? Like, this is the only way I can be consistent mm -hmm. over time. Like, I, if I start copying something, like, there's always going to be something missing or the thought behind my head that there's always going to be something missing. But if I created my own process, I am bulletproof that that thing is going to work. So what happened? We started doing 45 Live. We started doing 45 days of Facebook Live, right? That, that's how it started. And then it evolved to the to the machine that is running today consistently, right? Where it's like more than 400 pieces of content across multiple platforms consistently over time, more than a year now, right? And, and it's because we built our own system. So now we're like super passionate about like, grabbing people, right? Fonzie's like, I want to like legit just throw them into execution, right? Like, and it's like, yes, count, count me in, right? Like, how can we, how can we create those, so those systems? And this is exactly what you're talking about, right? You found, you started modeling that, but then you found your own way to execute on the content side of things and on the service side of things. That's the other beautiful part because we also need to fulfill, right? So mm -hmm. we need to make sure that we are in control of that fulfillment process and system to make sure that we can put people in place to do that. So it's a combination of, of those and as we evolve here same ha same thing happens to us right our process is about seven stages and we have people in place but it's our own process we're not trying to model anybody else right and the result you know are is is the volume is the consistency is we're going to be there for you is accountability is is the the consulting side of, of things afterwards right and it's so important so i want to highlight that that you said uh, because not a lot of people talk about that they're all like hey who the, what are they doing model it 
and then they're like, okay, and then frustration yeah. happens yeah, because be there's no execution. There's no capacity. They don't have the capacity to perform or have those systems in place, right? So when we realize that we're like, we want to do, we want to teach them the principles and foundations so they can build their own systems and processes that are going to work for mm -hmm. them. And when they outgrow those, then they know the principles and processes to, you know, develop the new systems and processes that they're going to need. And it, it, what I wanted to say was along the lines of the fulfillment side, I love how content and putting yourself in front of the camera and people actually forces you in a way to fulfill because now you're in the in the public eye right it's like if i am talking i need to back it up with action right if i am saying i'm the probate king i need to prove people that i am actually indeed the probate king and and i love that man because again that is something that might be missing inside of the space right inside of the digital marketing space and info product space i've seen it a lot people that have these claims and they they are really good at marketing but then when it comes to execution and maybe taking care of their community is not quite there yet right and, and that's a little painful because then you hear all these horror stories and blah 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 all the all that stuff so uh i'm now i'm, I'm super curious to know what is next for you you have the studio you have your incredible show you know are you gonna retake on your violin playing career <laughs> are you gonna open a twitch channel you know and start giving concerts in there what what's next for you in in the marketing sense of things so i thought about this i've had a lot of reflection on this over the last uh half a year um and of course i got my show the al nicoletti show that's every wednesday at 8 p.m bringing on florida real estate professionals yeah it, and, and and that's a whole other story about how that took off as well and i love doing it because that's again putting people on a stage and giving them a platform to talk but you know fonzie i thought about that recently about what's next and what i realized is i think i found a great rhythm right now mm -hmm. so when it comes to marketing and content i got one of my uh, we're walking down the golf course. I got my producer, Michael Williams. We're walking down the golf course. He's holding the gimbal and I'm doing my whole thing. And then we put out a video once a week. Right. Um, and then I got my podcast, which we do the micro content. We push out the micros, the, the quote cards. Yeah. And I think what I realized is it's a nice rhythm because I got to keep up the business. I just opened up the law firm, my own law firm. Uh, what is, what is it now? Almost two months ago. Yes. And so I, I'm the head, you know? Yes. I know. Congrats. I'm the, head of the, the king. <laughs> king. <There you> go. <laughs> and I got to do work. So, yep. I, and I got to keep up intake. So I'm basically playing receptionist, marketer, lawyer, and I'm, I'm trying to do that. And I got my paralegal doing the work on the other end about all the drafting and everything. Yeah. And so I, I got to, I got to balance the business. So right now I'm keeping it consistent. I think the best, the next best thing is speaking more, mm. going out when things open up. I think I've done so much content online that now it needs to translate to the networking in person. I think there is a, a psychological uh, connection when you do online and people see you all the time and then they see you in person. They're like, it's Al Nicoletti. And I'm like, I have no idea who this is right yeah, now, but yeah. they know you yeah. and it enhances that moment and gives them something to talk about instead of yeah. hey i'm mike you know i do uh pool systems you know who are you <laughs> it's different it gives yeah. it's, it's a celeb status I, absolutely i love this side of things because we refer as the safety net content right like it's uh and, and that consistency has to have it has to be there right and it serves multiple purposes is the marketing side of things is when new audiences find you call it digital call it in person they're gonna always gonna go research you right even yeah. though they don't get everybody's gonna go back to your yeah. social and they're gonna be like who's this guy right so everybody loves creeping on facebook and instagram absolutely. you know let's be real let's be real so um <laughs> we we call that the safety net effect because you know even though you know we're creating and, and i love that you mentioned i found my rhythm so many people are like so in like um distracted by the what's next right and you found your own framework you found what works for you according to your capacity when you assign content when you assign business stuff when you assign you know your customer relationship aspect of it what are these elements right as business owners we're not just marketers, right? Like if you are the face of your company, right? You are a marketer, but you also have a business to run, right? And for us, that has been a massive learning experience too in the past mm -hmm. year or so where 
it was the first time that we actually have to hire people. And so now we have the managing side of the team, right? Like how are we building those systems so we are able to execute, but at the same time, the content side of things don't stop because we still have to push our message. We still have to build relationships. We still have to build our safety net. And what you mentioned, when that happens, and you go to an event live, like yesterday, last night we were at this incredible event with best buddies, right? And people were coming to us and they're like, oh my gosh, what's up guys? And we're like, oh, hi, what's up? Nice nice to meet you. And like, oh my gosh, your your content, your your podcast. I've been, I've been seeing it. And I remember like, as soon as we walked in, this person was like, my video guy know who you guys are. And we're like, <laughs> oh my gosh, is he here? We want to meet him too. And he's like, no, he's not here. But you know, he says hi. And I'm like, wow, what an incredible feeling that is because we created an impact. And, and this is the beautiful thing. What she said was like, you, he's been taking action on the things that you guys talk on the show and he see the benefit and we're like that's it that that's why we do this like that's why we do the show that's why we develop relationships that's why we're loud that's why we're high volume because if i can help one person gain clarity and take execution is so worth it right so i want to congratulate you man because what you're doing is is incredible i had no idea what probate was before i met you uh <laughs> the fact that when i i went into your safety net content i'm like let me see what this, this guy talks about like he's coming to a show i need to be prepared but now i know exactly who to who to call when that conversation happens right and that's the, that's the other beautiful part about marketing the education aspect of it the connection mm -hmm. right obviously now we have you on the show hopefully i mean we're not real estate people but we'd love to do a collaboration on your show at some point and we're like what's sure. up guys and uh and but that's the beautiful thing is their relationship and then guess what anybody that comes to us and be like who do you know i'm like ah the the you know the probate king baby the, the one and only <laughs> this is this is it and this is the beautiful thing so i i wanna you know i wanna commend you i wanna congratulate you for the incredible effort, the incredible investment of building your own studio inside of your place to, you are committed, man. You are committed. So it, it's, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing that we're, we're doing in 2021, we're building it yeah. in our own place. Yeah. yeah. Your modern media, you know, ecos ecosystems, that's all we got to do. We now have our companies and we also have our media companies to make sure that our message is being heard. So I want to say like yeah. this is just the beginning. I cannot wait to see where you go, brother. And uh, we're, we're very excited for, for this conversation. So thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you, Luis and Fonzie. And Luis, when you came over, when everything was being built, I remember Nathan, Nathan's like, uh, Luis is coming. I'm like, wait, who's coming? And I was like, he's like, Luis from the Biz Bros. And I was like, oh, snap. Like, so when you showed up and you were standing there, I was like, Luis, you know. You, you were uh, like, he's smaller than I remembered. And I'm like, what? <laughs> he's still such a tiny little Hispanic. <laughs> it's okay, but, guys. But I saw you. I, I don't but feel I left out at all. I don't feel left out at all. It's okay. Uh, yeah, Fon <laughs> Fonzie was in there. Fonzie was in there. If, Fonzie, if you would have been here, it would have been. We would have probably had to do an episode from the webcam or something right away. Absolutely. Oh man, the, like my brother said, this is amazing. And I, you mentioned that the story on how your show took off is like a, a full on story on its own. So I, I want to leave that actually as a as a hook, so we can bring you back a second time. And I'm sure we're gonna bring you like a third and fourth time. And then I'm sure. We're going to go grab lunch and, you know, we're, we're friends already. We're it, friends. It's happening. I, yeah. I, I be, right before this interview, um, I'm like, how many local people have we brought into the show? And, and uh, an idea came to mind. We should do a local event. We should do like a local meetup, collaboration kind of deal, different markets, different people, and uh, just have a blast now that the city is like fully open. I think it's a great opportunity because we have people from all over, you know, from the marketing side, the real estate, the the law side of things. And I think uh, it, we could be something real cool. So I'm just going to plant the seed yeah. in in all our heads and be like, okay, should we brainstorm this a little bit more and, and do that? Because, you know, I, I spoke with Alex and Filippo. He has this incredible platform, 10,000 members where they match people up with in, in, podcast interviews and uh so there's a lot of talent here in town and i want to encourage everybody listening go out and reach out build these relationships you never know who you're going to be talking to so if you don't have a show it doesn't matter go do an instagram live interview connect with them add value to their lives yep. because then projects like this come up and then you never know who you're going to encounter and then we're going to elevate each other's world so yeah. it's about building those relationships right yeah. we we use this as a platform to build the relationships to then connect in real life what what when that connection you know becomes a connection in real life it's amazing Ooh, man 
Oh. That's what happened when Luis came. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you. That man. was a real life connection. You know? Exactly. I've, I've, I've skimmed over the the podcast. I've seen you on there, seen you guys all together. And it's like, then I see you in person and it's completely different, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe, yeah. Luis, what we're thinking is Jack's Podfest or something. Or, Ooh, the, oh, I like it. Oh, I like it. That's, that's going to be fun. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't have to tell us twice. Like our, our head just flies with ideas all the time. <laughs> um, okay. So last couple of questions, Al, that we love asking. Asking. So, what is your number one action point? And, and by the way, your whole episode has been a, an incredible <laughs> masterclass on on marketing itself. We have the the Nicoletti framework on mm. attention getting and uh, how, the actual roadmap on how to triple your business. Right? Yeah. Even like even in a, in a, a bulletproof business on crazy times. Right? So. All the notes are going to be right below. If you if you want the notes of the episode, just let us know. Send us a quick DM. But last couple of questions. What is your number one tip for somebody that's in in that stage of becoming an entrepreneur, starting to publish? They might have a business already, but they're in, in the publishing journey and they want to put their message out there. What is your number one tip for them? Take your message and be consistent on a weekly basis. Mm. Love it. Loud nice and clear. Con- loud and clear. Oh, s- short and sweet, loud and clear. I don't know, whatever whatever tag you want to put to that, but it's it. that's the truth right there. You got to do works. it in a consistent basis. That I feel it like works. that's where most people miss the point, right? It's like they, like you mentioned before, people want things quick. And sometimes we just got to be consistent with it or we're not going to get anything. Keep doing it. Keep going. Keep driving. And then, and then if you have that message and you stick with it, if you don't follow that method of the shiny new object every five mm-hmm. seconds you're going to get somewhere and look what it's done for me with my niche. I mean, yes. I just been grinding a niche that has been around for 150, 100 years, right? Wow. I mean, yeah. forever. Yeah, beautiful. It's incredible. So say, I got a second action point. If you're in Miami, move to Jacksonville. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that, that, that <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, absolutely. I mean, there's so many stories of success from Miami that come to Jacksonville. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, c- come. <laughs> we love our city. You, this you, city is you, amazing. You're going to be able to hang out with cool people like Al. Absolutely. <laughs> amazing people here, right? Like, yeah. I, I mean, if I never moved here, I would have never met you two. Been on, been on the show. I probably would have not even done my show. I don't know if I would have been speaking at the levels I am. I'm traveling mm. all over the state now, going yeah. to different RIAs, different meetings, meeting different people. Incredible. Because what we do as millennials and what we do in our age group, we can do all online. It's just a matter of how you do it and how you make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, la- last question. Favorite question of the show of everybody. Where will you be if you did not publish? If I did not publish, I would probably still be at the law firm I was at before I opened my business and still be a salaried employee. And I wouldn't be doing the entrepreneurial freedom uh, work I am today where I'm growing my own business. Mm. How rewarding is that? Oh, it's incredible now. I mean, and the thing is, Fonzie, nothing changed from where I was before to where I was now, because what I was doing before is the same thing now. I had a business, I systemized it, I monetized it, I was doing it at the firm where I was at beforehand, and nothing changed when I opened up my own firm because I had a message, I was consistent, and I did it, and I didn't change my message, and I kept it going. And so that's where I probably would have been, and I, or I would have been still in Miami. Right, yeah. like if I didn't take the job, I probably would have still been in Miami. Still, it's stu- stuck in traffic for sure. <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> hey guys, we need to postpone the podcast. I'm stuck in traffic over here. Um, yeah. yeah, Miami time. I'll be there in like uh, 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, yeah, that I'm going back to my my traffic days in Miami. Yeah, we don't yeah. go often. We've actually been in traffic in Miami at 2 a.m. in the morning. We were good, like coming down to pick up our parents from the airport. It was 2 a.m. and there was traffic. It was like. How? How? Yeah, how, how is this going to happen? But uh, yeah, yeah my, my parents, yeah, our parents were like, why are you guys late? And we're like, like there was traffic on 95 and there was no crash, no nothing. Yeah. What is this? <laughs> so yeah, anyways, yeah, Jacksonville is cool. <laughs> guys, move over here. Uh, Al, how can people find you? How can people connect with you? How can people can consume and learn more about you and your company? 
So I'm on all the social media channels. I have a Facebook business page. I have a Facebook page. You can find me at Al Nicoletti. I'm also on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. So it's at Al Nicoletti. I have videos that I post all my, my shows, my podcast, and all content on probate, partitions, quiet title. I have a whole bunch of things on there. I'm going to be posting out new content weekly. And so you can also find me on my Instagram page. It's at, at Attorney Nicoletti. And I'm on Spotify and iTunes on the Al Nicoletti Show. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. There are episodes that drop weekly and the micro content of course drops out on facebook and the facebook page daily oh. basically at this point yeah i love it man your, your publishing game is so strong yeah so i fun. absolutely love it um i'm actually gonna go check out your youtube channel i'm pretty curious i'm gonna educate myself a little bit about probate yeah he's gonna go into uh, the dark hole of learning that he goes to sometimes <laughs> so he, he emerges like a week after it's like i'm an expert now i know everything so <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a new man <laughs> i'm a new man and then he's like should we do that in the you know business room I'm like no focus fancy focus content is our focus okay uh we're gonna leave all those links right below so don't worry all you gotta do is to scroll down with your awesome thumb and just click it yeah. Just click it. That's it. Tap it, on each it, one of those and subscribe on each one yeah. of those. And leave him a nice comment too as well. Yeah. Uh, any any last thoughts before before we head out? Well, first of all, thank you both. Thank you, Luis and Fonzie. Thank you for having me on Content is Profit and getting my message out there, which is not even just about probate, but the fact that there is a method that anybody can follow. If you follow your own method, yes. you're consistent at it, and you find your rhythm, you can do your niche, you can do your systems and make it happen. And I think that what I've been able to do is something that anybody really can do if you just find your own rhythm and find your own personality and just make it happen. Absolutely. Thank Fonzie. you so thank you so much, Al. I am so thankful that you were here today with us. Um, I'm a little bit ye- jealous that he's the <laughs> one that got to meet you in person. So we're going to have to go and grab lunch one of these days. Yeah. But again, thank you so much. You got it. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Sweet. With that said, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and subscribe. Follow the show in your favorite platform and go to social media at Biz Bros Co. That is right. And if you found today's episode impactful and I'll help you take one more step closer to your goal, please don't forget to share it and, and leave a five-star review. See ya. Bye, guys.